Craig Black here. Hope everyone is well. Uh, as written in the text above this video, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to go through and debunk a few myths about shearing gear, sharpening shearing gear. Why? Because there's just so much misleading information out there, and I just see all the time the facts are getting left behind. Don't it? frustrates me seeing startup guys or learner shearers or any shearers for that matter. Um, just come to me with this information that's just one, irrelevant, two, it's based on someone else's opinion or preference or the manufacturer's re recommendation as opposed to basing the information on the facts. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to clear a lot of that up. Eh? So opinions mean nothing to me. Sharpening shearing gear has got nothing to do with opinion. It's just got to do with facts. No gear I've ever ground, none of my shearing gear that I've ever ground has cared about my opinion. So, I set up a young fella's grinder yesterday through a video call, one of our Logic members. Um, and at the end of that video call, we set up his grinder and out comes the question that I get so much. Is, Blackie, how many times should I go across? Let's just talk about combs for this example. How many times should I go across? One guy has told him go across six to seven times, swipes, six to seven swipes, and that'll bring your comb up. Some other guy has told him go across three or four swipes. A lot harder and that'll bring your gear up well I tell you both them bits of information you got from two different shearers couldn't be more wrong couldn't be further from the truth they're based on opinions not facts yep the facts of the matter are is you go across as many times as you need to to make that gear sharp sounds pretty simple doesn't it that's because it is so let's use that seven swipes thing as an example for a bit more understanding, yep. Let's say I ground this comb, the papers are brand new, and I jump on the grinder and grind that comb there, yep. Then I grind another 45 combs in the middle of that, yep. And then I pull out this comb and grind this one and go across seven times. First comb ground on the paper, seven swipes. 46th comb ground on the paper, seven swipes. Same result, no way in the world. It just doesn't make sense, yep. Another example, this comb was left on for one hour. This comb was left on for one run. Seven swipes, same result, irrelevant, yep. Let's say this comb was getting ground by Arnold Schwarzenegger and he's pushing the grinder through the wall and this comb's getting ground by mouse man or someone with real light light hand and doesn't like to put as much pressure on seven swipes across relevant not at all we've got to remember why we're at the grinder in the first place yep so correct me if i'm wrong we're at the grinder to make our blunt gear sharp again so shouldn't identifying how gear is sharp be above everything else everything else can come second yep the guy who says, go across with harder pressure, less times. The guy who says, go across with less pressure, more times. Well, they're both right. That's their opinion. That's how they get their gear sharp. So what happens there is that becomes above the facts. So people are talking about how you stand, how many swipes you go across, pressure, etc., etc. Whereas above that should be talking about how to identify if your gear is sharp. So after we set the young fella's grinder up, I went through with him explicitly how to tell if his gear, combs and cutters, is sharp or blunt. There's no in between, eh? Hey? There's sharp and blunt, that's it, simple as that. Once he understood that, he jumped on, I stayed on the call, he jumped on, buzzed a couple of combs up. And lo and behold, one comb come up to sharp in about three or four swipes, yep. And then the next comb he put on, he had to grind twice. Maybe he went across four or five times and then he just had to let it cool and we hit it again and then that comb should come up sharp. So basically one comb took just about as much, twice as much grinding as the other one. We later found out that that first comb he used, he only left on for about 20 minutes, half an hour because it wasn't a cool comb for them sheep he was shearing. And the other comb was performing better and he left it on for an hour and a half. So, excuse the pun, logic tells us the comb that was on for an hour and a half got more blunt, 
taking more grinding to get sharp. The comb that was left on for 20 minutes got less blunt, took less grinding to bring back the sharp. Irrelevant of swipes, irrelevant of pressure, the key point being he could identify that his gear was sharp. And you know what he cares about now? Not swipes, not pressure, not how he stands. He cares about identifying, without a doubt, that his shearing gear is sharp. Top of the pops. So I want to share with you quite a wee funny story about how easy it is to get misleading information and drift away from the facts of the matter, especially when it comes to gear, shearing gear, sharpening shearing gear, pendulums, etc., etc. So we had what's called a consistency workshop years ago, uh, where all the trainers from around the country come together in one place, this is in Australia, and everyone talks about the best way to deliver training. So there's some consistency across the board. We're in the grinding room. The first point of call is people are talking, well, we get onto the subject about people talking how you stand. What's the best way for someone to stand when they're at the grinder? Yep. Is it hold with two hands? Is it one left foot forward, right foot forward, etc., etc.? Stand center of the disc or over to the right of the disc? Whatever. All these ideas come up. Now, there's a lot of very good uh, reputations in the room. There's a little bit of ego in the room, as there always is with shearers. Um, and people are starting to discuss the matter at hand about eight or nine of us there and people are talking about the best way we should be teaching young people how to stand when grinding their shearing gear and after about 40 45 minutes it comes around and they say blackie what do you think about this um you haven't said much sitting over there in the corner and i said five words that just stopped the room in its tracks drop jaws there was silence the five words were I sit down to grind. Yep. And you should have seen the faces. It was almost like you can't say that. Well, I've been shearing all day. I've been working hard, standing up, dragging sheep in and out all day. I've got a real comfy seat next to me, grinder. A little spot where I want to have my little bevy. And I sit down to grind. And that just shows how much wasted time and effort can be led away from the subject at hand. You know the answer to that question, which is the best way to stand, is however you like. What you need is firm, even pressure on the disc so it doesn't go down to one side or the other. If you can hang from the roof by your boots and grind upside down and maintain even pressure on that disc, we'll go for it. Who cares? The facts of the matter are is you need even pressure on that disc. Now, however someone stands, Right foot forward, left foot forward, one hand, two hands, really is irrelevant to me. It doesn't mean anything. We've got to not go past the facts and start leading into opinion, yeah? And the ironic thing about that story is my father did exactly the same thing 20 years prior with the old wall board in Australia, AWC, with a bunch of trainers doing the same thing in exactly the same place earlier, yep? So after 20 years of having the best trainers in house, and then 20 years later, having the best trainers around the country in-house that still can't agree on how to stand, maybe we're talking about the wrong stuff. The most common fix I've had for helping shearers out over the last 20 years with their grinding issues, obviously there's some people that have set up issues wrong and, and certain pendulums don't work with certain gear yet, but the most common fix over all that time I've had is sharpening their gear properly. So young Tom, for example, goes, Blackie, I'm having trouble with my grinder. I can't work it out. Can you check my settings? Yep. Well, obviously I'll check his settings. If his settings are okay, the main thing that's happening here is that Tom's not bringing his gear up. So the first thing I do is go and grab Tom's comb and I grind it four times. Let it cool down in between each time, of course, but I'll grab that comb and I'll just grind the absolute shit out of it. Yep. So I've got no doubt in my mind that gear's sharp get four cutters, do the same. Take them back over to Tom's stand at eight o'clock on the hour, say, Tom, try these, this comb and these four cutters for the next hour. Tom's face is just all smiles, yep. He's like, oh, what did you do? You'll have to show me what you've done to the grinder. Did nothing to the grinder, ground the gear till it was sharp. Had no doubt in my mind I could identify that it was sharp. End of story. The point here is question everything. Question everything. That's how we learn in life. Always ask why. 
And like Albert Einstein said, If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. That wasn't Albert Einstein, that was just me putting on fake voice. But the point of the, point of the matter is, is that if, you, if we can't, the info you're receiving can't be put simply, or can't be put factually, well then the source of your info probably doesn't know what they're talking about, eh? Especially when it comes to shearing gear. Different when you're shearing sheep. That's open to option. That's open to preference. That's open to a lot of things. But as far as sharpening shearing gear goes, that isn't optional. That is just facts and faults, yep. Next week, we're gonna talk about touching your cutters up flat to the disc. Do you do it? Do you need to do it? No way, I haven't heard of anything more ludicrous in your life. I don't even understand why someone would touch their cutters up flat on the disc. Post some comments below if you want to why you touch your cutters up flat on the disc. I'm gonna debunk that next week. There is absolutely no reason to have your cutters touching flat on the disc. Over and out.